I'm going to tell you what you need if you ever go through a white collar crime investigation. You need some wins, damn it. You need some good news at some point because it's just the whole thing is full of bad news, right? When you get arrested, the feds show up at six o'clock in the morning, they put a gun to your head, the dogs run, we're in our underpants, we haven't brushed our teeth, they then take us to a detention center, we've never hired a lawyer before, we then ask some dude we don't know in jail, do you have a lawyer? Sure, you call the lawyer, you hire the lawyer, the lawyer bonds you out. The next week, the DOJ begins issuing these scathing Department of Justice, for those of you new to the criminal justice or white collar crime world, the Department of Justice begins issuing these scathing press releases that'll send you directly to therapy or into next week. They're horrific because they articulate and portray us as criminals and charlatans and thieves. It's just bad. And the DOJ has this incredible ability to ensure these releases go viral <laughs> so the whole world sees them. I mean, just look at Elizabeth Holmes' coverage going back many, many years. It's just bad. Not a whole lot of good news there. Then we get fired from our banks. We lose our job. Many relationships um, split. Can no longer coach uh, Joe or Jimmy's Little League team. Just bad news, which is why we need some good news along the way. And finally, Elizabeth Holmes has a big win. Some good news that I'm going to discuss in this video. For some background, I endured an 18-month federal prison sentence a very long time ago in 2008. While there, articulated some of those lessons and Lessons from Prison, a book that any of you can get for free at White Collar Advice. And I share this with you because the advice that we convey to you comes from having gone to prison, working with thousands of people, and some people call it crazy and insane and odd. But if you haven't been through it, you don't fully understand it. Now, I know when Elizabeth Holmes did that tragic, horrific interview with the New York Times, I can assure you when she was doing the interview, she knew this was wrong. <laughs> okay, When her boyfriend was doing the interview and talking about the dad bod, he knew that it was wrong. Elizabeth was hearing him speak and she was thinking, this is wrong. And when the journalist from the Times wrote the article, she knew that it was wrong. It was part of the reason it was panned and so poorly received because it was inauthentic. It just wasn't honest. It was a lie, including in that article. When Elizabeth Holmes said something akin to, they lived in an RV for six months while preparing for trial and racking up $30 million in legal fees. Now, if if anyone truly believes that she was having the time of her life living in an RV down by the river, you need to reach out to me. We need to have a separate conversation here because you're, you're not... Of course she wasn't having the time of her life. Of course it was horrific, regardless of how perfect she conveyed it to be in that article. Because when you're preparing for trial or a sentencing here, and even when I pled guilty and I knew that I was going to prison for what could have been two, three, four, five years, you're scared to death. You think about it 24 hours a day. You you can't, you can hardly function or get out of bed. It's just brutal and it's even harder when you're a celebrity or wealthy or the whole world knows about you. In my case, nobody knew me. It was easy to like lay low in my little man cave. So I know you'll argue she brought this upon herself and she did, but it doesn't change that she's been in prison every single day for the last many years and not getting credit for it, which is why tomorrow is a victory. And I shouldn't say tomorrow, it's five o'clock in the morning. I'm getting ready to do media around this case, hence the suit and tie. In a few hours, well, she's actually already gotten credit for time served today. She hasn't even got to the prison yet, which is why it's such a victory for her. Finally, she's going to get credit for time served. Finally, the clock starts ticking because you can't complete 135 months in federal prison. 11 and a quarter, you, you can't complete it unless you start, which is why she should have gone in months ago. And had she pled guilty and cooperated, she'd have already been home. Even if she didn't cooperate and just pled guilty, she'd, she'd have already been home. So she's going to have this continuing regret, more bad news. But the good news and victory is at least she gets credit for time served today. Now, let me wrap up this video by articulating to you. It's five, five o'clock in the morning here in Orange County, California, the Federal Bureau of Prisons would have told Elizabeth Holmes to surrender by two o'clock in the afternoon. We encourage people surrendering to prison to get there at like 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning so she can uh, get there before guard shift. She can get to the camp in the afternoon. We'll ensure she doesn't spend the night in the special housing unit or the hole. So it's just a good idea to get there a, a little earlier. They will park, meaning probably her fiance or boyfriend in the parking lot he is not allowed to walk in with her. They will come and get her. She will walk in and boom, just like that, that first day is going to be over. The first day, people, you know, build it up. People who have never been there build it up as a tough, terrible, awful, horrific day. People have been through worse. It's a quick, fast, frankly, pretty easy day because it's so emotional. It's so new. It goes so quickly like you're running on energy. The first day ain't hard. You know what's hard? 
June 17th, three weeks from now, when it's 1130 in the morning and she's in federal prison away from her family and people are beginning to forget about her and it's 1130 or noon and she's doing an ab class or she's walking the track or doing pots and pans or scrubbing toilets and showers and the reality sets in. My God, holy good God. I'm going to be here for another seven or eight years. So she's going to be running on adrenaline for a little while. But every prisoner I know, because I've been there, and we've worked with a lot of people, it sets in, this is my life. And that's when I think, as much as many of you have called me crazy and naive, foolish, shallow, stupid, dumb. I appreciate it, by the way. Someday my children are going to read these comments. But I know because I've been there, the ability for her to introspect and think and create and self-examine tends to happen when the reality sets in. I have no more options. When she finally recognizes, I made decisions that I thought would help me, but the tragic iron is they've only hurt me. I think she's going to get there. I, I really do. And if I did it, I know that she can and many others can as well. So as, many, as much as some people call me crazy and insane and, and nuts, finally she has a victory. Finally she gets credit for a day in the books. Elizabeth Holmes, finally, after many years, surrendering a few hours to federal prison for 135 months. I'm so grateful you've joined me on this journey. I welcome all the feedback, both good and bad. Today's a great day. Finally, a victory for Elizabeth Holmes. Goodbye.